Sarah Smith is up next, and the title of her talk is Association of Host Microbiota with Host Obesity, Insulin Resistance, and Type 2 Diabetes. Sarah. Okay. Uh, exactly one week ago today, Carolyn Gatte from the University of British Columbia released a study highlighting obesity rates across Canada from 2000 to 2011. Part of her project was to include obesity maps, like the one, well, exactly the one that you see above me here. Um, and if you look at the top left legend, you're gonna see some different percentages where we can compare obesity rates from province to province across Canada. Now, a general trend is that we're seeing that obesity is increasing across Canada over the last decade. And obesity rates are highest in the Maritime Provinces and in the Northwest Territories. Now, British Columbia is not out of the woods. Uh, our obesity rates have increased from just under 20% to just under 25% over the last decade. Now, across Canada, one in four adults and one in 10 children are diagnosed as clinically obese. And this is a big problem because there are a lot of diseases associated with obesity, such as cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance, uh, stroke, musculoskeletal disorders, and even some cancers. Obesity and its related diseases cost the Canadian healthcare system $6 billion annually. So this is a big problem that we need to address. Now, in the developed world, we normally associate obesity with an increase in caloric intake and a decrease in physical activity. But researchers are now looking for other explanations to explain how and why the obese state occurs. Um, one of the things that I'm interested in is bacteria. How on earth can bacteria be related to obesity? Well, it might surprise many of you that we have over 100 trillion organisms living on our body surfaces. And our body surface includes anything that's exposed to the external environment. So that's our whole gastrointestinal tract. Now, the most dense bacterial populations are found in our colon. And our colon's bacteria is called the gut microbiota. That's how I'm going to be referring to it for the rest of the presentation. Now, our gut bacteria normally help us. Uh, they do things like stimulate our immune system to keep us healthy, and they also digest certain food products that we can't get at on our own, um, so that we can actually get as many nutrients out of it as possible. That's called a symbiotic relationship, where we're helping each other out. In an obese person, it's found that the microbiota is in a dysbiosis relationship. So there are some altered numbers that's affecting how an obese state occurs. Um, the most exciting studies are looking at transplants. So we're taking obese mice and we're taking their microbiota and putting it into a mouse that has no microbiota to speak of at all. And what's happening is those, peop those mice that have obese microbiota are gaining a lot of weight they are um, having an increased susceptibility to store fat in their bodies, and they have an, a decreased sensitivity to insulin, which is a hallmark of type 2 diabetes. My research is important because obesity is a major problem in the whole world, and understanding how bacteria fit into that can help us to understand how and why the obesity state actually occurs. Thank you.